Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about the strongest team you've never heard about, an insanely powerful 4-star comp that destroys everything and is comparable, if not better, than most of the meta teams out there. That team is TF Bennett. To explain more, we're basically running a DPS Bennett on Thundering Fury with very powerful supports who can actually end up doing more damage than Bennett himself, and so the overall team damage is insanely high. Also to show you guys how good this comp is, here are some team damage calculations by Zajef77, my math guy. There are assumptions in this graph, a lot of them are written on top, and it also assumes a perfect parry from Beto uh, every 10 seconds instead of every 7.5 but you can see that against two enemies which is sort of the niche where beto is super strong it can potentially out damage a ganyu comp and that doesn't mean it's a better team that's not what i'm saying here it just shows that in its niche it can be better and overall since it can compete with the best teams it shows that this comp is very good which is why i'm more than comfortable saying that it's the most broken team you've probably never heard of because very few people know about this team and it's a team that zajef has been telling me about for months now and he's been wanting to make this comp more mainstream because of how good it is and so i find finally caved in and I'm making a video about it because it really is super good. And so again, shout out to him for doing the math and showing me the power of this team. Also, you might have noticed the inclusion of Lisa here. That is because the electro characters you use in this comp are somewhat variable. I basically always run beta with either Fischl or Lisa. You can use one of the two. And overall, it mainly just depends on if the enemies are going to get knocked around everywhere and how many enemies you're fighting and all that stuff. But they are both very good options. Uh, I just tend to use Fischl. This team is insanely powerful, and in my experience, it's usually like Beto carrying me with Xing Chu and Fischl having insanely powerful off-field abilities, while Bennett uses his E every second. If you guys don't know why this team comp works, it's mainly because of Thundering Fury. Every single time you overload on Bennett, your skills cooldown will be decreased by one second. And so that combined with your other talents, right? Rekindle decreasing your E's cooldown by 20% and Fear Not decreasing it by 50% allows you to be able to spam your E, Passion Overload, every second. And so that gives you this scaling literally every second, allowing you to deal a lot of damage when you're inside your burst. And on top of that, you have all your off-field abilities helping you and you're going to be overloading and vaporizing. I also quickly want to mention, uh, just to clear any misconceptions, the sort of super vape bug that people have been talking about is a bug regarding the four piece thundering fury set which basically will buff your bennett's damage it'll give him a bit more damage but we made sure in the calcs the jeff made sure not to include that bug so if it ever does get patched out the calcs are still accurate and this comp is still amazing because if you don't know what the bug does the result of it is basically just giving your bennett a bit more damage but he isn't even like the main damage dealer in your team so if they remove the bug it won't really matter the way this set is supposed to work, even with no bugs, is still amazing. You decrease your elemental skill cooldown by one second, which as I mentioned is huge on Bennett, and you also increase the damage of whatever reactions your Bennett triggers. So running TF Bennett is pretty amazing. Even if you lose a bit of like reaction damage by fixing the bug, it won't change the fact that the team comp is still very, very strong. And so because of all the elements being combined together, all the reactions and all the powerful units used together, very strong 4-star supports with a strong 4-star carry, your team's overall damage is insanely high. As you guys can see from the footage, I'm actually destroying anything I'm fighting. And keep in mind, like, my Bennett's ratio and stuff is a lot lower than a lot of my other characters. So my damage is already very impressive, despite not being optimal. Another huge strength of this team is actually that almost every ability here snapshots. Well, at least your electro carries do. What I mean by that is Beto and Fischl's abilities, Beto's Burst and Fischl's Oz, both snapshot. What that means is if you use Beto's Q or Fischl's E, Fischl's Oz, inside of Bennett's Burst, they'll be buffed for the entire duration of their ability, even if you run outside of Bennett's Burst or if it expires. So because of that, in your optimal rotation, you'll often use Bennett's Burst and then Beto's and Fischl's Oz, summoning them after you already amped your team to maximize your damage and make every single one of your party members do a ton of damage. Keep in mind, Shinkchu's burst does not snapshot, but he does so much damage that he definitely makes up for it. And obviously, he also allows you to vaporize with Bennett's E. This comp does have some weaknesses. For example, it is difficult to use. You have to learn the rotation pretty well. I personally am still inconsistent at it, despite having played this team for quite a while now. On top of that, this can be viewed as a weakness or a strength, but the characters in this team, so the strength of it is they're all four stars, so it is sort of free to play friendly. However, the downside is that they are some important characters like Bennett and Shinkchu are very high priority supports. But overall, the it is still a four star comp and a very, very strong one at that. Also, another weakness I can think of is that this comp requires uh, more investment than others to get started. A hyper carry comp like Eula or Shao, you can just invest into that one character and get a lot out of it. In this team, it can be similar. You can stack investment in your Beto or one specific character for some decent damage, but overall, this is a team where every character here does want some investment. 
So it does get a lot, a lot better in the late game. It scales very well with investment, but it can require more investment than like a Shao comp where you're just investing in one or two characters. Now I want to give you guys a pretty important section, talk about how to play this team and the rotation you should be looking for. First of all, I want to say, and we'll talk about builds in a bit, but if you're running Beto on a Serpent Spine, you can put on your first slot so that you passively stack it up, uh, like before starting Abyss or whatever you're doing. Other than that, you want to make sure you snapshot the abilities that can be snapshotted, so Beto's Burst and Fischl's E if you're running Fischl, and so you want to use those after Bennett's Burst. Once all your off-field abilities have been used, you can just spam auto attacks and spam your E on cooldown with Bennett to deal the maximum amount of damage, constantly vaporizing and overloading. So basically, since your Xingqiu doesn't snapshot, you can start with him, E into your Q, get the particles during your animation, then Bennett Burst and snapshot every ability. So Oz, and then get a perfect counter if you can, Beto Burst, and then go to Bennett and just kill everything. Spam your auto attacks and spam your E. Like, use your E on cooldown and in between uh, auto attacks so that you apply Xingqiu's Rain Swords and Beto's Burst and uh, Fischl. And then you're constantly vaporizing, constantly overloading, and every piece of content should be super easy. On top of that, you guys will notice that since you're running Xingqiu's Rain Swords and Beto's Burst, you have a lot of damage reduction. Especially if you have Beto's C1, which gives you a shield, you'll basically never die. And keep in mind, if you are running Lisa instead of Fischl, and you very well can, she is a viable uh, member of this team, you're going to use her burst to shred the defense of enemies. And the most important thing is you want to make sure you swap into the right character uh, because you are running Thrilling Tales on her. Because of that, you're usually going to give it to like Beto so that she can snapshot it on her burst. So make sure after your Lisa, you swap into the right character uh, because of Thrilling Tales. Before we get into the footage of this team destroying everything, I want to go over the builds of every single character so that you can replicate this team, and I'll give you guys a lot of good options for every type of player, so like free-to-play weapons and good artifact sets for every character. I'll try to go into as much detail as possible while keeping this section brief, so with that out of the way, let's get into it. For Bennett, it's pretty straightforward. You want a 4-piece Thundering Fury for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Uh, the set effect is just broken. That being said, the stats you want, you actually really want to prioritize Elemental Mastery because you do double dip into it. Elemental Mastery is really good because it buffs your overload damage and it also buffs your vaporize damage. Since you're proccing many reactions in this team with Bennett, Elemental Mastery is very important and so it's what I recommend on the Sands and also very good in your substats. Keep in mind my Bennett is somewhat suboptimal. I do have kind of too much Elemental Mastery, like a lot of my pieces do have it, but it is still very good and it's what I recommend alongside crit. So crit damage and crit rate are also stats you're looking for. On your Goblet, you definitely want a Pyro Damage bonus if you have it. And for your circlet, you want either crit rate or crit damage, trying to get a 1 to 2 ratio, as always. Also keep in mind, while my elemental mastery is very high, my crit ratio is pretty bad. And so I feel like since there are more stats to look for, more than just crit, right, you also can just get elemental mastery. Building Bennett can be a lot easier than some other characters. For your weapon, there are quite a few options. First of all, anything that has high base attack is generally good on Bennett, especially in this team, because yes, it might be worse damage for your Bennett himself, but since the base stack is so high, it buffs the scaling of your burst, how much you buff your teammates. And since two of your supports, Beto and Fischl, snapshot, having a high base stack is very important. So while a weapon like Jade Cutter, if you have it, is what I recommend for this comp, because it's just insane, weapons like Aquila Favonia or Blacklift Longsword, anything with a high base stack can be very good options. Lion's Roar can also be good because of the passive. And lastly, as a free-to-play option, I recommend the Iron Sting if you have it, because a DPS Bennett is one of the few characters that can actually utilize Iron Sting, and it's a great free-to-play option. Lastly, for Bennett's constellations, they aren't needed, but they're very good. And I don't want to repeat myself throughout this video, but you don't need any constellations. They just really help. And since they are four-star characters, you might end up getting a few. Bennett's C1, C3, and C5 are all very good, just because they give you more damage, so that does help if you do have them. For Xing Chu, his build might actually be different than what you might think, especially weapon-wise. So first of all, for his artifacts, you're gonna run a two-piece Noblesse Oblige with a two-piece Heart of Depth, as usual. It's a very strong burst support set for Xing Chu, maximizing the damage of your burst. And I also believe that four-piece Noblesse can actually be okay. Now, if you're running Lisa in this comp, and we'll talk about her in a bit, she'll be on 4-piece Noblesse Oblige. But if you're not, if you run 4-piece on your Xing Chu, you'll lose out on some of his burst damage, but you will in exchange buff your Beto and your Fischl, who both snapshot uh, right with their burst. So the buff from 4-piece Noblesse will actually be pretty significant. Overall though, I do recommend 2 Noblesse, 2 Heart of Depth, as I mentioned. And for the stats you want, it's pretty straightforward. However, you don't need as much energy recharge as you might uh, in a normal team comp. The reason for that is because your Bennett and your off-field supports generate so many particles, especially because of how fast your Bennett can use his E, generating particles, that you'd end up not needing that much energy recharge and effectively not needing a sacrificial sword, which I'll talk about in a few seconds. So that being said, I recommend an attack percent sans, hydro damage bonus on the goblet, and crit rate or damage on the circlet. Other than that, for substats, crit, 
uh, rate and damage are both very good. And energy recharge can also be nice to have uh, for your Xingqiu. That being said, you don't need as much. So in this team specifically, Sacrificial Sword is actually not your best option. It can still be good and can make the gameplay more comfy, but it isn't a must as it can be in a lot of other Xingqiu teams. Once again, since you generate so much energy, an ER sword is good, but not needed. Because of that, weapons like the Jade Cutter, even Aquila or Black Lift Long Sword or like a Black Sword, because they give you offensive stats like crit, right, crit damage, high base stack, can be good on Ching Chu. The weapon ranking is similar to Bennett's, as Lion's Roar is also pretty good, but you can also use ER swords like a Skyward Blade or a Festering Desire if you do have them. And so because of that, I do recommend Festering Desire as your best free-to-play option if you don't have any of the better weapons that I mentioned previously. Next up, we're going to talk about the Electro characters, Beto and Fischl. Keep in mind, you can use Lisa. She can be good and better in certain situations. If you run her, just slap her on a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers for Noblesse with Energy Recharge since you don't need to invest in her damage much. She's just there for the Thrilling Tales and the um, Ascension passive, decreasing the defense of opponents. So she is very straightforward to build and you don't need to invest into her much at all if you use her. Just level her so that she unlocks this talent, ascend her past 60, and you should be good. That being said, let's dive into Beto and Fischl. First of all, for Beto, there's a few good artifact sets you can run. The two pieces of Thundering Fury, Noblesse Oblige, and Gladiator are all good, and I recommend running whichever two pieces you have that have best substats. That being said, I run and recommend two Thundering Fury with two Noblesse, as it gives you 35% damage bonus to your burst and 15 to your skill, which is actually pretty significant. Beto is going to be the main DPS in this team if there are at least like two enemies, because Beto's burst does bounce a lot and it does a ton, a ton of damage. So because of that, you're going to be building her like a typical DPS with attack percent on the sands, electro damage bonus on the goblet, and crit rate or damage on the circlet. Now keep in mind for your energy recharge, you don't need that much since you're running a Fischl who's an electro battery, a very strong electro battery at that, and Bennett who's generating a lot of particles non-stop. That being said, energy recharge can still be an okay substat, and especially if you're running the Lisa variation of this comp, she generates less particles than Fischl, so you might need some energy recharge on your beta. However, your main focus should be crit, rate, and damage on your pieces. For your weapon, it's basically the good claymores that apply. Something like Serpent Spine is amazing. Because the effect is absolutely broken, you gain a ton of damage just for being on field, and you get a bunch of crit rate, which is very nice. On top of that, you can stack this to five before you even start like get into combat by putting Beto on your first slot in the abyss and then the stacks will just generate passively while you're afk standing there so you can start with all five stacks when you use your burst there are many other good options the five star claymores like wolf's unforged and skyward pride are all very good you can use a five star claymore if you have one that being said i highly recommend serpent spine because it is a battle pass weapon if you have it if not, no worries, the free-to-play option, Prototype Archaic, is very good, and the Black Cliff Slasher can also be an upgrade. Overall, though, Serpent Spine is my favorite weapon for Beto, Wolf's Gravestone is very good as well, these are like the two best in my opinion, and then Prototype Archaic is the best free-to-play option. For Beto, while you don't need Constellations to play her, her Constellation 2 is pretty amazing. It makes her burst just deal more damage by uh, jumping to additional targets, making her great, obviously, against multiple enemies, and it's just a very, very good Constellation. Now let's talk about how to build Fischl, an amazing Electro support, great battery for your Beto, who will deal consistent off-field damage with her Oz, her Ascension passive, and her constellations if you have some. So the way you want to build Fischl is with a two-piece Thundering Fury with two-piece Glad. Keep in mind the 18% attack from Glad is good, but worse than like substats, so you can prioritize your uh, substats over your set, but two Thundering Fury and two Glad is what's optimal and what I recommend. To go into more detail, the stats you want are attack percent on the sands, Electro damage bonus on the goblet and crit rate or damage on the circlet. So similarly to a lot of other characters. So you, and your main substats are going to be crit rate and crit damage and attack percent can be nice too. There's not much to say with Fischl. She's pretty straightforward. You build her like you're effectively building a DPS. You're basically building Oz by building Fischl as this just DPS that's constantly on the field, helping your team out and generating particles. For her weapons, there's a ton of good options. Obviously Skyward Harp is just an amazing bow if you have it and what I recommend, but not everyone has five stars and you really don't need it. The Alley Hunter bow, which I don't have, is her best 4-star option. If not, Stringless and Verdescent Hunt are both amazing. Verdescent Hunt gives you a bunch of crit rate, Stringless uh, gives you an insane effect that buffs your damage, and so they're all amazing 4-star options. If you don't have them, the best free-to-play weapon is the Windbloom Ode if you got it from the event and refined it to 5 for free. Lastly, I do want to specify that Fischl's Constellations are all very good, but once again, you do not need them. They are sort of overhyped, but they are also very good if you do have them. Lastly, for the talent priority for every single character, I want to go over it. 
For Bennett, you want to level your burst first and then your skill. The reason for that is because your burst will actually buff your whole party. The more you level this burst, the more attack percent you give to every single party member. So prioritizing this will increase your team's damage quite a lot. After that, I would level your skill, Passion Overload, and you don't need to worry about your normal attacks too much. For Beto, I would level her burst first. The scaling on this is quite high and it's what deals like the most damage. And after that, you can level your parry, which is also pretty good. For Xing Chu, I would also focus burst and then skill. Once again, your burst is what deals the most damage and is very important to level. Lastly, for Fischl, I focus on the skill here. This is what levels your Oz, your summoning damage, your attack damage, basically everything. And your burst really isn't as important as some might think because it's only that initial hit that gets buffed. It's not that big of a deal, so I would really focus on your skill. Lastly, if you're using Lisa, you really don't need to invest into her because once again, you're using her for this passive and thrilling tales. But if you do want uh, to, if you do want her to deal damage, you can level your burst. All right, so now we're going to get into the DPS showcase, showcasing this team in action, mainly in Abyss 12, because that's the hardest content in the game, and showing you guys just how strong this team really is. Now, keep in mind, I don't play perfectly, so it could obviously be better, and my stats aren't amazing. Like, for example, my Bennett, uh, his crit ratio is pretty low, honestly, but it should give you a good idea of what this team can do. And another thing to keep in mind is that while this team comp is very strong in the current Abyss 12-1 and 12-3, in 12-2 it might look a bit worse because there's so many enemies that are all split everywhere, it's hard to, like, stay in Bennett burst and to actually use my abilities efficiently. But anyways, we're going to get into the DPS showcase, doing mainly Abyss 12, but also maybe a few domains here and there to spice things up. Before we get into it, I want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. I hope the guide was helpful and I hope you enjoyed the showcase. Let's go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm trying to show just how broken this team is, and I really do believe it's one of the strongest four-star teams out there. The math says so, and through my experience, I can just tell that it's a really strong team. And if you guys like it, it's one that you should definitely use. I hope this video is informative and enjoyable to watch. Let me know what you want to see next. I think we're getting a Klee guide soon, and then after that, I don't know, probably some of the new 1.6 stuff, because I assume there's going to be a lot of new, strong, and improved characters. Assuming the EM buffs uh, come out 
this patch. It honestly took me so long to learn this comp properly, so I hope I did it justice, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching the showcase and learning about the team. Let me know if this video helped you because it does mean a lot. Sub if you want to, if you don't, that's okay too. Follow me on Twitch, all that stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.